what I intend to do is take one of these leg blanks that I've made and set the pattern on it and line it all up perfectly. Make some reference marks for some mortise and tenon, uh, well actually just for the uh, mortises, and uh, outline it and then I'm going to cut out the rough shape on the bandsaw. And then I'll go and reapply the template and actually fasten it with some staples or something and then use a pattern bit on my router to write out the final shape. Okay, let me get you up to speed on what I've been up to lately. Uh, this, these are the back leg blanks. They're about 42 inches long. Since I had to joint both edges, which is not recommended because you could end up getting a taper um, along the length of the board, but that's just how it worked out, just so I could um, saw off the majority of the waist instead of running this through my planer like a hundred different times just to get it down to this thickness you can see that one of the glue up boards is about half the thickness as the other one anyway so what I did was I squared off one end out of each one of these boards and then I just marked it with a square mark just so I know that this face and this face are perpendicular to each other and then when I use my pattern um, I will reference that pattern off these two faces. But I'm not at that point yet. Right now what I'm doing is I'm taking these blanks out of the clamps and these are the blanks for the front legs. I should get at least two front legs out of each one of these. And so I have to take them out of the clamps, clean them up, and then cut them to their final uh, width and well, just all their final dimensions, um, and then they'll be ready for the mortises. I'm going to process these front legs pretty much the same way as I process the back legs. So I joint one face and then one edge, and I get these square to each other. I think what I'm going to do is bring this down to final thickness, and, um, and then go over to the table saw, and cut my legs out and then clean up the saw marks and everything with the planer. The next couple of steps can be taken in any order, it's a matter of preference. Um, I could either cut the legs out and then run them all through the planer to get them to their final dimension, or I can run these boards through the planer to get the final thickness and then run those finished boards through the table saw to get the uh, finish width of the leg, and then one more pass through the planer to clean everything up. I find it easier to handle larger larger pieces so I try to keep the pieces as large as I can um, it's going to be inevitable on the final pass for the legs but 
in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and dial in my thickness with the planer. Okay, so the front legs are pretty much cut out. I did leave them a little wide so I can make two passes with the planer and then um, those dimensions will be perfect and then all that will be left is to cut it to final length and I'm going to save that until I'm ready to put the mortises in the legs. Alright, let me show you guys what I have set up here for cutting my mortises. This is one of those adapters for a drill press that turns it into a mortising machine. Now my drill press is a Jet brand drill press and this happens to be the Jet uh, part that turns it into a mortiser. Just because it's made by the same manufacturer doesn't really mean it's high quality or anything. Nothing against Jet. The, um, the shank here used to be 5 eighths of an inch. I had to drill that out to 3 quarters because most, most uh, mortise chisels are, have a 3 quarter shank on them. And the Jet ones were super expensive. So anyway, all the complaints you hear about these adapters are rooted in some type of uh, legitimate fact. Let me... Uh, show you the first mortise I cut with that guy. I suspect it'll get better as I get more familiar with the nuances of this. And you can see it kinda it kinda wanders a little bit. Now you know that's probably like I don't know less than a sixty fourth of an inch. And the shoulder of the ten end piece that's gonna go in there will cover that easily. I still have a lot of cleanup to do on the inside there. Um, basically, I'm laying out the mortise on the legs before I cut the legs out because with the complex angles, well, not complex, but with the multiple angles on this leg, zoom out, it would be nearly impossible to get that mortise on the apex of these two angles. So. I'm, cu I'm cutting the mortises in the blanks and then I will cut the legs out of the blanks once the mortises are in place. Go ahead and take you over to my makeshift mortising machine and I'll show you how I cut a mortise. I guess it all starts here on my assembly table which is my layout table for the time being. I first measure the the height of the front leg which is 17 and a quarter and then I subtract from that the height of the chair frame which is two inches and then inside in between these two marks is where the mortise actually takes place so actually the mortise starts at about 17 and a sixteenth and it ends at 15 and 7 sixteenths And all I really need to mark is the start and end point of the mortise because the mortiser is set up to give me the right distance from this face to the edge of the mortise and the mortise is 3 eighths of an inch um, wide which is the size of the mortising chisel that I have in there right now. So let's go cut a mortise. Since these mortises are offset, I have to make sure there's a handedness to these legs. And so I have to make sure I make the same number of right hand legs as left hand legs. So I'm just doing them in pairs. Your angle isn't the best. I don't really have a good way to set you up. But this is how it looks when it's all ready to go. I have this plastic fence which you know obviously isn't the best but it does the job and then I will start I will start the mortise on that line and I'll work my way down and end it on that line. 
And then I'll go back and kind of clean out the area a little bit. Just the more I clean out, the less I'll have to chisel after the fact. So I got the first mortise cut in all of the back legs and I was starting to lay out um, where the second mortise goes for the um, I guess this would be the the back um, seat rail and I remembered I might as well leave my mortise set up um, for the front legs. So before I go and change the settings on my my mortising jig, I'm going to go ahead and cut the upper side rail mortises on the front legs here. I went ahead and cut all the front legs to their final dimension, so these are final. Uh, all three dimensions are final on these legs. I'm gonna have to soften the, the edges with something yet. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do there yet. But for now, I'm just going to put the mortises in the top of the legs. So with the first two mortises cut out of the leg blanks, now is the time to cut out the rough shape of the leg, like so, making sure that I have the mortises in the right locations. And I do that first by using this pattern, and I'm going to use it in conjunction with my table saw fence, which I'll show you in a minute. And I will mark out the, the dimensions of this pattern on the leg blank, and then I will cut that leg blank out at the table saw. I use the table saw fence as a flat reference, and I put my piece up against that fence. And then I had previously marked up here where my square corner is because I jointed this edge and then I and then I cut my 90 degrees with the chop saw on this end and so I know this is a square corner here and so I lay my pattern on the blank and I line up the front face of the pattern on the fence and the bottom of the leg on the bottom edge of the blank here once those two are lined up, I'll hold it tight with my hand and I will mark out the pattern on the leg blank. Once that is complete, I have the pattern marked out on the leg blank, and now I'll move to the bandsaw to cut out the rough shape. Here at the bandsaw, I'm going to cut out the shape that I just drew onto this leg blank, and I'm just going to make sure I cut it just proud of the line. That'll aid me in doing the final finishing of the piece later on.
All right, here is the setup I have for doing the pattern routing. I've got a router table insert on my table saw. I'm going to take the pattern and I'm going to lay it on top of one of the rough cut blanks. And I'm going to line it up with the previous outline that I had put on the blank. I'm going to fasten it with my nail gun and then I'm going to run it on this pattern router or whatever this is, this pattern router bit. And um, so give me just a second, I'll get it all set up and then we'll run it we're gonna pass through. So, I learned the hard way that routing end grain is not recommended. Most of these turned out okay. And it probably had to do with the grain direction or anything. But then we come up to some that just caught on the blade. And they look terrible. I've got at least three that are pretty bad and gonna have to be refinished. Uh, this one here also is bad. So the way I'm going to do that is, you can see I've drawn a new mark, and so this one is just going to be about three-eighths of an inch shorter, and, and I'll have to match the opposite side. I might just do them all that way, just so they all match. We'll find out.